done. Good morning again. Today is Friday morning. It's well after seven. It is good morning, brothers and sisters out there. Or today is a new day to start out with prayer or message or it's uh we left yesterday on Thursday out of town. We got back about probably quarter after eleven. Three hours drive. Back to Winnipeg. But we're here to keep praying, to keep uh, going in the Word of God. And we're kind of tired, but the Spirit is alive. Hallelujah, as we pray. See, keep praying, keep seeking the Word of God. Hallelujah. Today's a new day, yesterday. Start off a new day today. Give thanks to the Lord that I am here today and, and uh, to keep walking with Him in the Spirit, to keep praying in the Spirit by the power through the blood of Jesus Christ, and keep praying for communities, reserves, and all that. And, uh, to come together and to live that name the most high God is in the Together in the word of God, to walk together, to help one another, to encourage one another, to pray together in the word of God, to pray for our children, grandchildren, People out there, or cousins, or relatives. There's so many we need to work together in the Word of God, not against each other. To work together, not against each other. To help one another. Thus, the Word of God. God is will be done. You see, when he speak the word of God, God is will. It will be done. Jesus has to come first before me. He is the head of that body of Christ. Not anybody. God is will, not anybody. God, Jesus, come first for anybody. Together, come together and lift that name, the Most High God is name. I'm going to pray and thank you, Father. Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done in honor as it is in heaven. Give us today in our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil one for yours the kingdom the power and the glory forever forever. All the praise, all the glory to your angels. Hallelujah.
This is my desire to With all my heart of words, you all I give you a praise All I adore you Lord I live I give my soul every breath that I take every Lord, I give you my heart. I give my soul every breath. Every moment I'm away Lord, have Hallelujah See, it's good to get up and, and pray and seeking the word and the rather to walk with Jesus Christ in my life in the spirit. It's good to pray in the spirit, the word of God out of the world. I'd rather to have time to spend time with Jesus in the Spirit of God to pray for her children, her grandchildren, her brother need help or need to be encouraged to help one another.
to work together not against one another. In the Word of God, to learn how to work together, to walk together in the ministry, to help one another. That's what I mean. I mean, it's good to see your brother or her sisters out there, the uh, brothers in the Lord, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It's good to, to talk, to bring the good word or speaking and fellowship one another and walk together in ministry and help one another and help their children grandchildren to speak the word God it will hallelujah
be delivered by the power and the Holy Spirit to pray hallelujah for healing and the power by the blood. Let your words to be preached by the fire, Lord. Lord, deliver me with a fire. Make me a minister with a fire, Lord, how Be with us in the, in the spirit, in the spirit. I pray for my, our family is out there that have been struggling with alcohol or drugs. Jesus give us authority to speak the power and the deliverance and the healing, the prayers. God is will, His will be done as we speak the word. the word to speak 
the Most High God is name. together in the prayer to lift you up the most high God is name Lord we need you more than anything in the world in the spirit pray with us got a power and authority to, to repute that the devil not allow to control you you got a power to speak my friend Keep praying.
by the power through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, I've always had a mind of Christ. Jesus is in my mind. I got it delivered by the Holy Spirit. 30, 35 years ago. He took every pain in the sickness that I had. He took away from me that alcohol that or drugs or she took everything away from me. I had no craving alcohol. How powerful the Spirit of the Lord. How powerful. When you seeking the word, when you seeking the word, willing to to walk with him. That's how it works. You have faith in Him. You walk with Him. Not distracted from earthly world. There's so many things out there distracting. But you have to focus the Lord. You have to walk with Him. And the street line. I'd rather to walk with Jesus Christ. I don't distract at anything. It didn't matter who. I don't distract. I'd rather to walk with Jesus until the last breath I'm going to take. I'm willing to walk with Him. And pray. Nation, but a power in Jesus' name. Now, does it encourage you? Encourage you. God saved my life 35 years ago. He saved me from the death. God saved me. I gotta die a long time ago. God took me. And he walked with me in the spirit. And he delivered me with alcohol and drugs. There's so many things that delivered me from gambling, all kinds of things. Taught me to listen to the Word of God, not from your head, not from your from the heart, the Spirit of the Lord lives in you. Walk with you every day and ask, speak as, speak life, speak the truth, the truth sets you free. Lying takes you. Lying. If you're lying, you're not telling the truth. It doesn't help you at all. Be honest to your friend, to your family, to yourself. Lying doesn't take you anywhere at all. No place. But I'm encouraging my friend.
stay on the word, focus, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to call my wife to, uh, just going to say a few words and uh, thank you for your listening. Don't get tired of me because I never get tired in the Word. You see, the Word says, don't be ashamed. Go out there. Jesus said, bring my name. Use my name. Don't be ashamed to speak the Word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. everybody God bless um, hello to our friends from New Mexico and from Saskatchewan uh, welcome and our um, sisters here in the Lord sister Lindsay sister Sheila we just thank you so much for listening and your support and being with us every morning um, and uh, a new sister there Mr. Cook, um, we're just glad to have you all with us this morning. So today, um, <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. We had a little bit of a journey yesterday, but that's okay. It was good. Um, and it was uh, it was nice to see brothers and sisters in the Lord that we haven't seen for quite a while. Um, actually, I'm going to move up just a little bit. <clears throat> some of the brothers and sisters that uh, we were able to spend some time with yesterday, um, it was nice to hear from them and what they're doing and how they are. Um, you know, I, I wish that the circumstances had been much better. Um, However, we were there to support one another. We were there to support Brother, Brother Clifford's family, and you know, we were honored to be there. Um, friends and family and people made a way, and we're so grateful for that, that we were able to be a part. Um, and just here, you know, sometimes we, we look at each other's lives in passing, and we don't know the details of the journey. We don't know how many people were touched, how many people were impacted. We think that, oh, I know this person. But we only see from our perspective, our, our encounters, our visits, our discussions. We don't see everybody else. And so it's nice to hear, you know, um, what was shared, what was ministered, the experience, to see his home and his family. It was beautiful. And uh, we drove into the community, and it was very, you know, kind of sad to see the old part of Lake St. Martin, and but then to see the beautiful new homes and how everything's being um, built up. And so we want to keep that community in prayer in the coming months as things open up for continued healing and revival and for the, the move of the Holy Spirit to just be there with their young people, with their the new generation. And um, we just, uh, our hearts are just really blessed today. So um, 
this morning I wanted to just focus a little bit. I've been talking about Paul's missionary journey and he is really a, a favorite uh, Bible character, a character but individual of mine. And I just love, you know, sharing about the Apostle Paul and um, Jesus being our focus, Jesus being our, our ultimate example and who we should follow and who we should be patterning our life after and his word. Um, that's really where we need to, we need to think about the things that he says because when he speaks, it's on such a deep level that every time I read in the gospels and the, the red letters, it's amazing. It's amazing the depth and what the what they capture in those verses. So today I'm going to start with the book of Luke, and I'm going to start in chapter nine, verse um, looks like verse 51 and this must be in subtitles this is a new bible this is the new bible that i was given so i like my <laughs> my word king james bible it doesn't have all the it's not the same so i'm just trying to get used to it it's brand new but i absolutely love it because the meaning is clear to me and it's very specific. I, I just love the way that this Bible explains things on a level that everybody can understand it. And um, so I'm going to start with verse 1 here. But I'm just going to go into a quick word of prayer first. Lord God, as we come before you this morning and we just give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we just, we just love to be in your presence. We just really, really need you every single day, Lord God. Lord Jesus, you just bring so much more than we could have ever imagined to our lives. The blessings, the opportunity, the connections, the, the visual, the spiritual eyes that you know you opened in our lives and the sight that we have today it's not the way we saw the world yesterday there was no hope there we were so tired and we were worn from the battles that faced us with no end no solution but today god you've given us all those you've given us every rest every reviving drop of water that we've needed lord You've been there to quench our thirst. You've been there to lift up weary bones and continue for us to move on and to be inspired and to be encouraged and to be blessed. And just at the perfect time, Lord, you always do these things. We just thank you, Jesus, for, for coming into our life and, and saving us and setting us free and rescuing us out of that place where the darkness in our mind brought bitterness and resentment and anger and trying to entrap people into to schemes and backbiting, different things that we were entangled with, Lord. We're so grateful that you brought us out from there, Lord Jesus, and you set us free in our spirits and our hearts, and you changed us every level, Lord God, you changed us. You gave us that godly DNA that can't be touched or affected by anything on this earth because it's eternal. It belongs to you, Jesus. It belongs to you, Lord. It's yours. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. says that no 
no man, no nothing will pluck us out of your hand. So we just thank you this morning that you're here with us again to guide us and direct us. And as you hide me behind the cross this morning, Lord God, and as you use these lips of clay to, to minister this word, just help, help those ears that need to hear, those hearts that need to receive something this morning. That's of encouragement. We just leave these things with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So this morning in verse 51, it starts out. As the time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He sent messengers to a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But the people of the village did not welcome him because he was on his way to Jerusalem. When James and John saw this, they said to Jesus, Lord, should we call down from heaven? Should we call down fire from heaven to burn them up? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So they went on to another village. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, Come, follow me. The man agreed, but, he, but said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. And Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So, yesterday, my heart was on, you know, the life of this brother and the call of the evangelist. And the ministers that are out there on the highways and the byways and on the roads and, and just hearing the stories from the from the experience of this man and thinking about other brothers and sisters that are out there daily with this task for the gospel and so in verse 51 he says that he's headed to Jerusalem and we know why he was going to Jerusalem but he was going through a particular area of the country and so Through the route, was, though the route was indirect, Jerusalem was Jesus' ultimate destination. And we knew, we know today, we know now that he was headed there to die and be hung on the cross. But the people in the land weren't aware of, of, his, of his journey. And he had to pass through a Samaritan village. And the Jews and the Samaritans had a history of conflict and racial prejudice. They hated each other. The Samaritans had worshipped, who worshipped on Mount Gerizim, probably assumed that Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem to worship there. 
So it probably assumed. So I don't know how many of us see an individual and assume we know where they're going. We assume we know what they're doing. We think we know based on their religious background, the color of their skin. We make statements every single day that are just absolutely horrendous assumptions about people's lives, whom we know nothing about. And it's a part of culture, it's a part of social media. We say things that we think are absolutely harmless that are really deep down there, they're quite devastating, and we don't know that to be true. So this was the environment that he was going into. A history. A history is years and years and years of this. And it was based on religious practices. Seeing somebody in um, deciding who they are and what they are by what they have, you know, in their home or in their vehicle or, you know, we don't know the significance of any of those things. We don't know the hearts of those individuals. But this is what this this is what they were in, in involved in is um, this hatred that had gone on for years. And even the the, uh, the the reaction of the disciples is something that's very interesting. Because they go back to the law. Immediately they return to the law. And the disciples say, Lord, should we call down fire from heaven to burn them up? Jesus turned and rebuked them immediately. So if you have a, a, a disagreement or if you have something, instead of going into that relationship and meeting those individuals or saying, you know, What's you know? What's your concern with us? What like having a conversation? They wanted to run over and you know do what the other prophets had done and and call down fire from heaven. Like how many times have we seen people bashing one another behind the pulpit needlessly with the law? We don't need to call down fire from heaven on our brothers and sisters. We just need to have a chat. We just need to sit down and have a conversation. Jesus rebuked them. Verses 57 to 61, it's all kind of together. So he's speaking to, I'm just going to turn off this air conditioner, it's kind of loud. He's speaking to individuals that are responding to him and telling him, I'll follow you. And as I was thinking about these ministers yesterday, these evangelists, I remember being a baby Christian and thinking, man, that's awesome. Like, I would love to do that. I'll go travel with you. You know, I would love to do that. Oh, let's go on the road. Let's, let's go do this. Like, just so excited because, man, the anointing and, and the, what happens, you know, 
what God does with people's lives and just seeing that. And I thought, man, that's amazing. But I didn't see what happens when they don't have money to go home. I didn't see what happens when they're stuck at a coffee shop all night long waiting for a ride that never shows up. I didn't see the long periods of time that they spend away from their wife and their children or their husband and their families. You know, my husband is in his 60s and we set up a, a few things for a church meeting. Physically, that's hard. Physically, that's, it, it, there's a, there's a, a level of um, strain and even spiritual spiritual opposition to those things. And I can't imagine the battles that get faced on the road, on the highway, for people who go out to bring the word. They've got this seed this huge amount of seed in this call to preach the gospel with the goal to get people saved. With the goal to save souls and make a real dent in the kingdom of darkness. The spiritual opposition to that must be huge. Accidents flat tires, financial trouble, marital, marital trouble, you know, whatever the enemy can throw against, it's going to come up. So these, these sections here, 57 through 62, Jesus is explaining the cost. In 58, he says, no place even to lay his head. Jesus says, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests. But the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another person in 59, come follow me. The man agreed, but Lord, let me return home and bury my father. Respect for parents was very important. Value in first, a very important value in first century Israel. Among other things, it meant providing them with an honorable burial. Jesus called for a command, a commitment that took precedence over all human relationships. Wow. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. So even for those of us who are, you know, a little bit more Martha than Mary, Jesus is saying there's always going to be someone to take care of those duties. Your call is to carry my word and take it to the world. In verse 60, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Literally, let the dead bury their own dead. The word spiritually accurately reflects Jesus' meaning, which is a play on the meaning of the word dead. So this is very interesting. In 61 and 62, another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. And Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. And that is a very heavy statement. It's, it's straight. I mean, he's very clear. The statement let me say goodbye to my family. The statement echoes Elisha's request to Elijah 
Jesus required one more complete commitment from his disciples. Puts a hand to the plow and looks back. The ancient farmer guided a light plow with his left hand and his oxen with the right. And looking away, so if he went like this, then your hand's going to move. This hand is going to move. And it would turn the plow out of its path. For a believer, looking back meant placing earthly concerns ahead of God. So this is where this whole section is leading to a place. Because Jesus, on this journey, he's headed for Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, he's going to die on the cross. So the disciples at this time don't understand. Hi, honey, you're right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> the disciples at this time don't understand that he's speaking about the ultimate cost. Giving our lives for the cost. For the, for the cause of Christ and the gospel. Giving our lives for this gospel. Giving over everything. Not to put ahead of um, relationships or family or, or our financial worries or our bills. or we, we give those things over and we go out and we preach the gospel. That's what Jesus is talking about. As he traveled towards Jerusalem to suffer and die, Jesus explained the cost to those who wished to follow him. And the ultimate cost was to go to the cross. And so we need to remember these things and ask ourselves, what kind of a cost are we paying? Is it lip service? Are we just showing up at church to see who's there, to go out for coffee, to talk about insignificant things, to be on our phones during the service? Are we just there to see who can give us a ride later, who might have some money we can borrow? I mean, there's so many motives to see if that good looking girl or that good looking guy went to church today. What's our motive? What are we really going and being involved in the gospel for? Jesus said it's to die. It's to, to give our lives over. As baby Christians, when we believed on his name, and we confessed our sins and we repented. We believed on the work of the cross. We were so desperate because we needed that cross. We needed that second chance. We needed for our past to be paid for. And we were ever so willing to accept his death. But what about our own? How willing are we now to give away those blessings, to move those things aside, to set things aside for the cause of the gospel. To go out on the highways and the byways and, you know, yes, everything at home is a mess and people are really not happy and things are upside down, but God is telling me to go. It's 11 o'clock at night and I have no gas in my tank, but God is calling me to go. And he's telling me. I need you there. Are we going to look away and derail that path? Are we going to have an excuse? Is there going to be a, a problem in our, in our home life or a family that's going to hold us back? Do we have a family that understands and supports what we do? So many things that we have to think about when we make choices to follow Jesus. 
And so I just, you know, I'm really privileged to have known our brother and to have seen the cost that he was willing to pay and the length he was willing to go for the cause of the gospel. You know, and I, he loved Jesus. He loved <laughs> the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And so I just want to leave that with you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.